Welcome to the second part of my do-it-yourself corner. Today it's all about hydrophones, underwater microphones. I'm going to build more than only one and more than only one type of hydrophones. There are some useful videos about making hydrophones on YouTube and I've watched a lot of them and I'm going to use a big deal of the shown techniques here in my video. You'll find some links to videos which inspired me the most down in the description area. But I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to show you at least four different ways and four different hydrophonic techniques in one video. I say at least because as a frequent visitor of the yard sales and flea markets I've got a huge amount of things useful for making hydrophones. Then I'm going to compare these hydrophones plus the sound from an underwater camera plus the sound from a pickup I bought for electrifying a violin. Of course I'm going to put the pickup in a waterproofed cover. I haven't ever tried something like this before, so I surely will make some mistakes. I'll show you even these mistakes in this video and I'll take you with me on some detours. I'm sure there will be some of them. Well, let's have a look at the things I'm going to use. As you see, there are piezo elements as well as common dynamic microphones on the table. This bunch of old mics I bought for less than a dollar each some time ago. I will have to test them first and to do that I'll have to solder a suitable adapter. These five pin connectors may serve for making MIDI cables sometime. But what else do I have here? There are common things like adhesive tape and glue, but there are also strange things like these little adapters from a plumber shop. Let me sort the material and make a group of the uh, groups, sorry, of things which I'm going to use for each of the hydrophones. But before I really start, I have to tell you and take it deadly serious that everything I'm showing you here is deadly dangerous. And as I don't want any super clever advocates to try getting some money from me, okay, I haven't got any money anyway, but just in case, I repeat, don't do anything I'm going to show you in this video. Scalpels are sharp like hell and deadly dangerous. You can hurt, seriously hurt, all of your fingers and any other part of your body, and you can die from these wounds even. The epoxy resin is a deadly dangerous chemical. It generates poisonous gas and vapors and it glues your fingers and your whole skin to anything you are touching it. Uh, and uh, it can, uh, and probably will, use dangerous, cause not use, cause dangerous allergic reactions. And even any of the other tools I use in this video and each of the materials I'm working with are deadly dangerous. The shown drill, for example, can drill a hole in the table and your mom will see it and will get a heart attack and your father cannot pay the bill from the hospital and will get a heart attack too and you will not have anybody else to rely on anymore and therefore you will get a part of a gang and then you will get shot dead. So drills are dangerous as well, as you see. All right. I repeat it again, don't do anything you are going to see in this video and perhaps it's even better not to watch this video at all. End of commentaries. For the first type of hydrophones I need uh, this quite big dynamical microphone. I need um, the big bottle here. I need adhesive tape. And I need oil. I'm going to use uh, some tools as well, <laughs> of course, um, um, as there are a soldering station. And a uh, scalpel. And a wire stripper.
The second type of hydrophones consists of balloons and cable ties and this nice tube and um, a little bit of glue, hot glue and this smaller dynamical microphone some ballast quite heavy and cardboard the tools I'm going to use are a hot melt gun of course a pair of scissors and a saw. Perhaps I use another saw, but um, well, we will see. Hydrophone type number three now. I will need these piezo elements and um, again a piece of cardboard and epoxy as well as some of these adapters from the plumber shop. The tools I need are cable stripper, scalpel and scissors and of course like always, a soldering station. It's the same with hydrophone number four, but for the piezo elements. I'm going to use uh, these cased piezos instead of these simple ones. Well, so far for my plans, let's see where and how far the project will take me. But at first, testing the microphones. As I simply want to know which of these microphones work at all and which are broken, I solder a makeshift adapter to on the fly. Most of them have these old DIN connectors and I don't want to cut the cables, at least not the ones of these beautiful original Tesla microphones. I've bought some 5-pole DIN jacks and soldered some small cables to it. I connect the ends of the ground cable and the record cable to the rashes of the phone jack, which fits into my Zoom H5 recorder using some crocodile clips and start testing. Okay, I admit it's a very makeshift solution, but it's quickly made and it works. I don't want any quality test right now and I want to start making the first hydrophone as fast as possible. Once upon a time there was this man called Old MacDonald and he had a farm. But instead of caring about his animals, he went on holiday on a ship and met a drunken sailor who nobody knew what to do with. MacDonald took the guy home to his farm, but the sailor wasn't only drunken, but even hadn't ever seen an animal in his life, and seeing a horse he went pale of fear. MacDonald told him, Here, here! And the sailor answered, Ho! Oh. And that is how the recording with the tested microphone sounds. Once upon a time there was this man called Old MacDonald and he had a farm. But instead of caring about his animals he went on holiday on a ship and met a drunken sailor who nobody knew what to do with. MacDonald took the guy home to his farm but the sailor wasn't only drunken but even hadn't ever seen an animal in his life and seeing a horse he went pale of fear. MacDonald told him, Here, here! And the sailor answered, how? Oh. All right, 
Six of the eight microphones from the flea market work perfectly. Let's go for the first hydrophone now. I unscrew the lid of the bottle and to take a look at the mechanism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it seems to fit tight and it's even possible to lock it. Well, I'll try... No, I will test it. I will test if the mechanism is really watertight. And so I fill the bottle with some weight, some ballast, and put it into my bathtub and leave it there for a while. It's four hours later now, Let's control whether the bottle is really watertight. And luckily it is watertight. But there are four problems to solve. I told you about detours, didn't I? First, I will have to fix the weight outside the bottle and somewhere in the middle of it, otherwise the microphone will always point to the ground. Second, I'm going to fill the bottle with oil completely. But this nice cap, looking like a roof of a cathedral, will stay empty and the oil will swash to and fro in the bottle, causing unwanted noises. Third, I will have to drill a hole in the cap, a hole to lead the cable through. And fourth, I must prevent the microphone from moving to and fro in the bottle and from bumping against the bottle. I will have to fix it somehow. Well. For the weight. For the weight I'm going to use a bricklayer's tool and two small rack rails which I found in the cellar. The weight of the bricklayer's tool would be sufficient, but I need the rack rails to keep the hydrophone in a horizontal position. The final construction will be a bit nicer than that makeshift construction here. I'm going to solve problems 2 and 3 at the same time. After drilling the hole in this, well, <laughs> cathedral and leading the microphone cable through it, I'm going to fill the lid with epoxy, this uh, two-component resin mixture. This will prevent the unwanted bubble of air in the bottle, and it will make the hole watertight, and it will fix the cable and serve as a strain relief. And for fixing the microphone and preventing it from moving around in the bottle, I'm going to use one of these sponges. Okay then, let's drill a hole in the roof of the cathedral. I think the cable of the microphone is long enough and solder a phone jack at the cable, a jack that fits into my Zoom H5 recorder. Now for the sponge. I've got a notch in the sponge to fit the microphone in and press both together into the bottle.
a little bit of adjusting the height of the microphone in the bottle and the construction is ready for test, without oil so far. Well, testing a bit. I don't use voice or music because um, it will all um, be underwater, it's all about underwater sounds. I just hit some remarkably sounding things. And here are the results. The original sounds first recorded directly into the Zoom H5 using its stereo microphones. And now the sound from the bottle. Well, quite good so far. Now the epoxy. But take care, really. The epoxy gets very, very hot and there will be indeed poisonous vapors. Don't breathe them. But before I fill the cap, I fix the cable with some hot glue, uh, which also makes the drilled hole watertight from the outer side. I attach some hot glue to the opening mechanism as well. Okay, it is watertight, as we have seen, but just to be sure. While filling the cap with epoxy resin, I take care not to cover the screw thread of the cap, and, I say it again, I take care not to breathe the vapors. I've bought two less epoxy resin. They wrote how many grams are in each package, but not how many milliliters. I guessed, and I guessed too low. Therefore, I fill the rest of the volume with hot glue after the epoxy is hardened. After even the hot glue has hardened, I fill in the oil and screw the cap on the bottle. While closing the bottle, the microphone goes a bit deeper into the bottle and some oil swaps over. I should have thought of that. Well, it shows that the bottle is really filled with oil, at least. I remove the oil from the outer side to seal uh, the bottle with some additional hot glue. The last step is attaching the ballast. Before I put the uh, sorry, I put the whole construction into my bathtub again. Um, I repeat the sound test from before. This time with oil in the bottle. And now for the bath and some water games. And here is the sound recorded from the hydrophone. Alright, very last thing to do is attaching a strong cord to the construction so that I can throw the whole thing into a pond and pull it out again. Let's go out and do some first recordings of a little creek. There isn't that much water after a long and dry summer, but it's still sufficient for some tests.
And now the same, but with sound recorded with a hydrophone. Well, hydrophone type 2 now. Second thing is cutting the tube to a sufficient length. And I have decided not to use the saw, but to make it more easy to use this Dremel instrument to do this. And a bit of and a bit of cleaning the edges. and drilling a hole for the cord. Then I make a knot at the inside end of the cord and fix a nail to it using a drop of hot glue. Now I pop the mic into the tube and start filling the tube with hot glue. But before I can do that, uh, I must prevent the glue from flowing through the tube and out again on the downside, so I close the tube temporarily with a piece of cardboard. After the glue has hardened, I turn the tube upside down and fill it completely with hard glue. After the whole hot glue has hardened, I slip a balloon over the microphone and the tube. I fix the balloon with a cable tie. And because I'm a careful guy, I wind an adhesive tape around the whole construction and cover everything with some more hot glue. Now for the ballast. A third rail from my last shelf building activities gets uh, fixed with two cable ties and the mechanical part of the construction is finished. Well, the cable of the mic is not long enough this time. I solder an adapter and an extension cord therefore. The rest of the tube serves perfectly as a waterproof cover for the connection when filled with hot glue. Please take care that even the spots where the cables enter and leave the connectors is completely covered with hot glue. There are some obvious differences to the first hydrophone. Not only that this one is smaller than the first one, it is also more directional. It is also more sensitive because there is only this thin layer of rubber from the balloon covering it, a fact that makes me a bit nervous on the other hand. Time for a bit of testing in the bathroom. Letting the water in, original sound. And the sound from the hydrophone.
and again the original sound from the camera and the sound from the hydrophone. And sound from the camera and the hydrophone sound. Well, 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 hydrophone number three now. I've drilled a hole for the cable in one of the adapters from the plumber shop. All right, so I pull the cable through and remove the insulation. Also the inner one and the holes here are not tight enough, so I use the scalpel for this. Carefully, I do it carefully not to cut the wire itself. Drill so I make nice make nice ends, nice cable ends. Which make it easy to solder them in a while. It's close, always closing the scalpel at once. All right, soldering now. I'm not the world's most skilled soldering professional, but it's okay. Uh, the first thing I've done already, I've done already, is I've put some solder on the cables here, on the cable ends, and now and I have scratched a little bit at this wide insulation of the ceramic. But the first thing to solder is soldering. Let's say the minus pole to this huger disc. And that's it. Not more. Yeah, works. Uh, we have to be careful, or I have to be careful, because this ceramic uh, layer is very, very thin, and if it gets too hot, it gets this, this, um, this, um, destroyed. <laughs> Sorry, but I need a little bit more of solder at the, on the cable. Yeah, all right. Then I see I've scratched at the wrong, wrong place. So I, I scratch it here. Hmm. You see, it's the first time I'm doing this. Let's scratch it a little bit more. All right. I hope it will be sufficient. And again, a little bit solder on the, the iron. One, yeah, and now the signal pole, the plus pole, should be sufficient. I hope it is sufficient. Mm. Let's hope. All right. I want to test the piezo now and 
solder and adapter to um, plug the hydrophone in my zoom recorder. And you and I see and hear everything works fine so far. So next step is cutting a little bit of this of foam from this um, kitchen sponge to glue it on this side of the piezo element so that later on the element can can move in uh, this case so let's say a bit like that Cutting off the ends a bit, putting it into a more or less round shape. Uh, oh well, we'll do, I think, really a, only a drop of glue. Oh, it's already a lot but okay and then putting it here yes and then I'll let it dry for a while always putting this safety cover over the sharp sculptor. All right. Now I bring the piezo element in a more or less in the more or less correct position. Fix it with a drop of hot glue. When the hot glue has hardened a bit, I start filling this container with epoxy, but I have to wait a minute or two or three or four or five <laughs> at first. Now it's time to fill in the epoxy, but not completely, just Let's say ninety percent. This epoxy is a little bit different from the one I used with hydrophone number one because I have to mix it to stir it. And it takes longer to harden. What's probably an advantage. Next step is positioning the piezo element in the right way. 
foam down, putting it in position. There is a problem. I've bought epoxy glue and not epoxy resin this time and that's a mistake. I should have read the description on the packaging more carefully. The glue needs some hours for getting hard. I have to put a kind of, well, sleeve around the container to prevent the epoxy from flowing away from the piezo element. Then I fill more epoxy glue in and wait and wait and wait. I had to wait 12 hours for the epoxy to get hard enough before I could continue. But now it's time for some testing in the bathtub. And in spite of the problems and mistakes, even hydrophone number 3 works fine. This piezo-based hydrophone is the most sensitive of all so far. Hydrophone type number 3 and hydrophone type number 4, they are quite identical, but for the following differences. I use a cased piezo element instead of a bare one. This means I don't need a sponge, no, don't need a sponge buffer for the piezo element. I have bought the right epoxy resin again. And I will put the piezo deep into the container. The fabrication and the rest of the material are the same as with hydrophone number 3. And now for the filling of the container and positioning of the piezo element. Well, the piezo element fits quite exactly in this in the container. So I have at first I fill in a little bit of epoxy. At the beginning it's quite hard. So the piezo element fits quite exactly in the container, so I fill in a little bit of epoxy here at the ground, but not so much. Only enough to fill the volume, which is more or less used by the, the pins of the piezo element which are coming out of the case. Five minutes time to do this. All right. Now, yeah, that's good. And now I cover the whole thing epoxy including the surface of the container here around to make it really watertight. Well, 
five minutes and it will be hard. It needs ballast again this time. The hydrophone won't sink otherwise. I decide to improve the construction a bit, also for the sake of getting a different color of sound. I glue a second small vessel to the construction, filled with uh, ballast. I use epoxy, uh, epoxy resin again to glue it all together. And testing. <laughs> 